you a little bit of a company background of what Also Energy is all about. Sure. So Also Energy uh, was formed in 2007, and our mission is to enable the adoption of renewable energy systems, and we do that by providing monitoring as a service. Um, you know, since 2007, we really started shipping our product in volume in uh, approximately two years ago, in 2010. And um, since then, we've really grown quite quickly. Um, right now, for example, we have over a thousand sites that we monitor in 14 countries around the globe. And what I'd like to say, and it's kind of funny, of course, is that um, the sun never sets on also energy. Not if you're monitoring all around the, the, the globe. No, it's true, too. You, Power doesn't run out when you're when it's going around the world. No, and there's no downtime. You know, there's no downtime in this kind of a world. So it's kind of exciting, and uh, it's, it's a great architecture and a great system. Okay. So what what do you do that differentiates you from what was out there before you came along, or, or was there anything, any any type of product that would provide the monitoring that you do? Sure. So there are um, there are monitoring providers. Uh, we're what we call a third party monitoring provider, and. Um, you know, what we do that's different than our competition is first we provide a very comprehensive and customizable package um, that's customizable at the report level, at the graphics level, it's customizable at the alert level. But a thing that, you know, in addition to the alerts and the reports and the customization capabilities that really separate us from the pack is that we provide a very, very, very complete support environment for our customers. That means pre-installation support where you're talking about how to design systems up. We talk about installation support and then post-installation support. These are things that our competitors really don't do well. And how important is, uh, well, I, mean, I guess I should, the first question is, this, this is mostly on utility scale type of projects or is it more even on the commercial level of, of projects? Sure, that's a great question. So. Um, our sites actually vary in size from a kilowatt and a half through some of our OEM partners all the way up to 20 megawatts in size. But our target really is the three-phase commercial, industrial, and larger systems. Okay, and so how important to those installations is the type of monitoring that you provide in terms of their ability to stay on top of what their systems are, the output of their systems, and right. their efficiencies? Well, I think, you know, the real answer there is that our, you know, customers, you know, they have a financial interest in the systems. And for them, you know, it's critical that these, these systems really perform at the peak, at the design. Because it's, it's a return now, a financial return. And that's really the critical piece for this industry. You know, as the systems, you know, really uh, are, are being installed all over, you know, really it's a great, you know, this, this accelerates further as the cost of the systems goes down and as the system performance, you know, is maintained. So if, I'll give you a good example. You know, a monitored system, for example, um, has about 6% higher output than a non-monitored system. And that's simply because you know when there's failures. You know, a monitored system is less expensive to maintain because you know what to fix. You know how, you know, you don't have to have multiple truck rolls. And uh, there's a number of other advantages that monitored systems have, but those are like the, the easy and straightforward things to see. Okay, so there's, say there's a system, uh, we're in San Jose, say it's South San Jose, there's a big system, it's pretty close to perhaps where the company that owns it is, but yeah. in other cases, larger scale systems are maybe in remote areas. Right. Is that what, kind of what you're talking about too, is that by being in, in touch, being able to be in touch with exactly what's going on, you know when and how to, to maintain it and, and deal with any problems. And well, that's exactly right. I mean, the idea of the, of the monitoring system really is that you can, at your desktop or on an iPad or iPhone, see exactly you know, what your systems are doing all over the globe. And you know, as a consequence, you really have the, a good idea what to do. You know, and the alerting system, for example, in our package is very powerful in that it tells you, you know, performance impacts, for example, so you even know the urgency of what to do things, you know, or the urgency of, you know, if there's problems, mm -hmm. how quickly something needs to be dispatched, or can it simply wait into a normal PM cycle? So it's, it's how you do it economically, right, and how we go forward economically. So it's one of the, the chief thrusts of our company. I have a, a rooftop solar installation by Solar City, and they yeah. have a little device that we plugged in, and, and it monitors our system for them, and that's, you know, they need it for the measuring of, the, of what they're doing. Right. Is, is, it was it fair to say that your system is a, is like a, a vastly superior scaled up version of that, where you re, you know that you can really dial in everything that's going on in the system. Sure, and I can't speak to specifically what Solar City does, um, 
But I can tell you, you know, oftentimes people monitor the power output of the inverter, and that's a great you know, place to do monitoring, but we'll actually monitor everything from the panel up to the portfolio. And that can be, you know, um, small inverters, micro inverters, it can be string level combiners, it can be zones. We can monitor the inverters themselves, the AC power output of one or multiple uh, sites. Um, we can monitor the weather on the site and determine, you know, are you producing what you would expect to based on the weather conditions. You know, and even we go so far as to add um, video cameras on site. And that, what that allows you to do is, you know, not only do you, you know, kind of get the indication, but a picture sometimes is worth a thousand words. You know, and we have cases where there's snow or something on the panels. And that just you know, tells you, right, you know, very quickly, in spite of the fact it might have great sun, you're just not going to produce anything. So the big you know, solar panels pricing is caught, the costs in the industry are dropping, technology is, is rapidly improving to make the panels more efficient. So you're part of this equation though of making you know large scale solar efficient, which then makes it affordable for you know in a, in a, in a part of our energy portfolio going forward. I agree. I think that's hundred percent what we're trying to do. I mean, it was a mission that we started off in two thousand seven and you were a component of that. You know, we may not be able to reduce the cost of panels, but what we do instead is we help the system produce more power. You know, we reduce the cost of maintaining the systems and we reduce other business process costs. So it's really all about you know, how we bring this forward and make it more economic. So in a way, you're sort of a modern day version of what the, maybe the old coal fire plants, you know, they built them and then they came along and found ways to maybe get a little, squeeze a little bit more out of it or clean up the emissions a little more. Here's sort of the modern day equivalent of that in terms of taking the system and making it function at optimum efficiency each and every day. That's right. Or at least understand if it isn't. Right, then that's, that's exactly right. I mean, we're part of the puzzle that helps you know, maximize the output. And uh, to us that's really critical because oftentimes too, you know, we're that expert witness or the software provides the data that becomes the expert witness. And, how the system is performing. Is it doing what you designed it to do? I mean, it's all these important questions when you talk about bankability, when you talk about financeability of projects. Where, uh, I mean, you said you were all around the world, but what's your biggest growing market right now for your business? Well, I think we're, we're pretty much standing in it right here uh, okay. in the state of California. Um, we see tremendous growth here continuing. Um, we also see growth in Arizona um, and uh, some East Coast states particularly New Jersey, Massachusetts, you know, Pennsylvania. I mean, we just see growth you know, in these areas, um, and we kind of really expect it to continue for the foreseeable future. It doesn't seem, though, that your business would be one that would be subject or worry too much about subsidies in the industry, in that you know, you're, you're getting people that are installing systems, and they want to get the most out of that system once it's in. And that sure, you're sure. not in that equation, of, uh, that, that buying equation about you know, subsidies or no subsidies. Right. You know, I think, though, I mean, you know, business. If, if business is impacted, then we certainly will be impacted. You know, we're not the we're not the driving engine of the of the systems. But by the same token, you know, we you know uh, we are pulled by by the by the buyers. So we are critically concerned. I think about how how uh, the nation goes forward with its its programs, um, and uh, you know, we just look forward to working with the customer base we have. Just a great customer base and, and such. What's your uh, what's sort of, sort of your vision about the next you know five years of, of the business? Uh, how do you see it shaping out? You know, there's a lot of talk about you know on the large scale of getting the grid parity and right, you know, some right. of these other things and getting to a not needing subsidies by 2015 or the association. Right. What's right. your feeling from your perspective? Well, you know, it's an interesting question. Um, I worked in the computer industry for you know 25, 27 years of my career and. You know, what we did in that industry was, you know, every 18 months we doubled performance and halved costs. And there's every reason to believe that this industry really is no different. And, you know, will there be challenges? Absolutely. And do we know the way to get there? Absolutely not. But I think that there's enough intelligent people and desire and, um, you know, willpower to, to drive those costs and, you know, continue to make the systems, you know, more and more economic. You know, you, you combine the you know, the economics with, you know, energy prices, you'll find that, you know, there's locations around the country which are economic right now and have great returns. And, you know, these areas all change. And, you know, they'll continue to, to present themselves. We're really bullish on what's happening. And, 
yeah, I think it's a great, a great future. I mean. From your perspective, I'm asking everybody this question, and if it's yeah, yeah. but uh, going to be an election year, energy has been thrown into the mix a little bit in the in the debate so far. Right. Would you like to see it be even more of a, in the mix of the of the talk when it comes to to the presidential election, talking about energy and alternative energy solutions? Well, that's an interesting question. I think you know if you look at the United States population, I read a, a, a poll results just the other day. I said basically, you know. Two thirds, if not slightly more than two thirds of the American public, views solar PV systems as extremely favorably. And that number is approximately the same for the wind side. So I think that regardless of you know, what happens, that you know, the people of this country still believe and like to see these things go forward. And um, you know, I think that energy is a critical thing. Absolutely. I mean, I think one of, the, one of the things that made the country great is inexpensive energy and will continue to be addressed. And uh, that's all right. Uh, sorry, where I forgot where I was going. With no, that. no, that's okay. Um, <laughs> I, I took it to my spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I it, it, like you said though, the American public is favorable. And I think that we've come, we've kind of come over the hump where it used to be sort of a, a niche thing, maybe sort of the alternative folks liked right. it. I think. Americans and even around the world are now realizing that it can be mainstream and they've just been waiting for it to be affordable. And now right. we're